up after buzzers we're back here for another episode of botch and tonight we have all female patients we're gonna be talking about their nose jobs some breast implants as well and by the end of the episode we have some exciting news and gossip right after this you're tuned in to after buzz tv the espn of tv talk now let the buzz Hey, After Buzzers, we've missed you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Juliet B. Bear, and I'm here with the lovely Tyra Prude. How you doing, girl? Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> what were, I mean, like, what an episode. We're going to be breaking down this episode. great episode. We're going to be breaking down so much. Um, we have three different patients. One, uh, they all have crazy stories. Mm -hmm. One de dealt with traumatic uh, nose injuries and surgery after surgery. We have another patient who dealt with breast issues. She, uh, because of and surgery that she had as a young child, then that developed into more issues as her as an adult. And as I mentioned, we have some very exciting news and gossip, so you won't want to go anywhere. Tyra, before we get really into these uh, patients and their whole storylines, can you tell me what your thoughts about this episode? I really enjoyed this episode. I really liked how it was more, I always say this, but it was more, I guess... What, are, what is the term? There wasn't a lot of crazy. It was like legitimate reasons why people were there. Mm -hmm. Their backstories really touched me. And it was just like, I really hope that the doctors can help these people because they're genuine and they just want to live a better lifestyle instead of the typical, I want to look like a sex doll. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this episode was a pretty sentimental episode. We mm -hmm. didn't have, we always talk about how there's that one character, as you're saying, who wants to be a blow up doll or an alien, whatever the case may be and they're not really in there as a reconstructive type of surgery as mm -hmm. other patients are and tonight that wasn't the case so I yeah. really enjoyed that as well yeah. I think it's a heartfelt episode let's uh, talk about our first patient of the night model Carmen Campuzano um, so she has a tragic tale she, um, she, I don't think I've ever heard of a patient that's currently living with screws inside of her nose that was insane like the fact that her screws hold her, her implant together. And I thought about the last person that, um, I don't know if it was, was it last week? Yeah, the lady who just had the complete absolute nose. Yeah. I mean, no nose. That's what it reminded me of, except she just has like that little piece to, you know, decipher between the two nostrils but other than that it's nothing else in there that was weird i know it i mean it's a crazy story it's surgery and story she definitely does look i mean i'm sorry deformed when you see her you know mm -hmm. that something has happened to her and she mentions that she's seen she has seen 12 doctors who have refused to do any it's surgery crazy. it's so sad I, her story really like broke my heart because she was like this famous model like beauty is her career her face has to you know help her get money and the fact that she can't or people like mock her and make fun of her now it really sucks because it's like one little accident ruined her life in a way I know but it wasn't even a little it just seemed like a well, very intense but accident but it's like when you think about what was the cause behind the, yeah. the messed up nose it was like wow something is li like I'm gonna be fearful to go to the airport now if I have like an overhead bag <laughs> like, yeah it's true I mean your life can change in an instant mm -hmm. it's what this show reminds us but despite this it seemed that she still had some spunk in her and she mm -hmm. seemed to still have you know, this bubbly personality and I really I really love learning from characters like this that despite their traumas, they're still uh, they still keep a smile on their face. Yeah, definitely, she did. And then also, I mean, she liked Doctor NASA, so maybe that's why she was a little bubbly. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> what do you think of that pairing? Um, no, no. <laughs> why not? I don't know. It's just a little weird. I don't know. I mean, also, but Doctor NASA impressed me with his Spanish, so I mean, it could work. Like. I don't, I don't know. It could work. It could work. I think it gets tricky when it gets into the whole patient doctor relation. So maybe yeah. for the cameras, he was holding it back, or yeah. I don't know. Maybe he has someone in his life. We don't really know why. Right. He I said mean, no. but I mean, she's a famous supermodel. I mean, that would be a good. I don't know. Thing for him. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, but I feel that he has a little bit of guilt and kind of obviously disappointment, as he mentions, because he's not able to really operate in the way that he wants. And, you know, 
uh, it's I think it's one of the first few times I've heard them say no to someone. Yeah. Related to a botched case versus mm-hmm. a an aesthetic enhancement case. Yeah. But I mean, it was legitimate reasoning, though. Like she has screws literally holding her implant together. And without it, he has nothing to like hold on against it. So it makes sense. But I don't know. For some when I was watching it, for some reason, I feel like Carmen is gonna be back. Even though he couldn't do it. He was saying like he's hoping that later on he can find a way or maybe his brain, he could think of something to help her. So I wouldn't be surprised if she's like on an upcoming season because he finally figured something out. Interesting. Yeah, I like this idea of keeping hope. You never mm-hmm. know. It, this is not a no forever, it's a no for right now as we maybe we'll figure it out. I like mm-hmm. that idea, Tyra. Thank yeah, you. Of course. Um is there anything you want to discuss about her journey? Anything that surprised you really touched her apart from, as we mentioned, her spunk, uh, just her personality? Um, not really. Just the fact that it sucks that people make fun of her and they said she wanted to be like Michael Jackson. Who wants to just, who just purposely messes up their note? Well, you never mind. <laughs> this is botched. <laughs> Take that back. People do it. But it just sucks. Like, Overall, I wish I wish Dr. Nassif was able to help her. Yeah, but as you're saying, we're we're staying hopeful, yeah. and we're learning from her. She uh, remains positive, and as will we. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> yes. So uh, with that idea, let's move on to Ellen, who has a nasal trauma that she, like multiple nasal trauma that she has to face. She is a 47-year-old uh, New Jersey resident, and she's a domestic uh, violence survivor. What did you think of her story? I thought it was insane, literally insane. The fact that the reason why her nose is that way because of previous abusive relationships and I don't know, being thrown and tossed around, that really sucks. I, that, it was, I wasn't expecting that. It was really, it was really deep. It really was. I mean, she left her house, I believe it was at the age of 14, she mentioned, Mm -hmm. and she just went from, Bad relationship to bad relationship and just very physical abuse that's left her, I mean, left her with a messed up nose. Then from there, every time she looks in the mirror, she remembers that traumatic past. She's like trying to move on from it, but you're always reminded about it. It's the middle of your face. Then she decides, okay, let me get surgery to try to fix this. And yet we still don't have a victory with that. What do you think about that whole story? Uh, Moving from the, you know, the abuse The fact that she couldn't even get a surgery that was successful. How sad was that? It was so sad. It would make me sit and think, literally, why me? Mm -hmm. Like, I can't, I can't win. I'm, I'm in this abusive relationship, multiple abusive relationships. And then when I'm finally trying to move over, move on and pick up the pieces to my life, I still just can't win because I can't get my nose back to normal. It really sucked. It really did. It really did. But I mean, she was, her case was more hopeful than uh, Carmen's case, at least. Yeah, that was a good thing. They were yeah, definitely a- able to operate, and right off the bat, I believe they um, they they gave her pretty good at odds. They, this seemed to be something that they might work out. They seemed pretty confident. Difficult surgery, but they were willing to go in. Um, one of the reasons they were really reluctant is that she's had multiple surgeries and revisions. Mm-hmm. They mentioned that you need a year in between, right? And she in between surgeries and within a year she got three yeah that was crazy also because like i don't know that makes me think about how long does it take for a nose to heal like she couldn't have waited that long for each surgery back to back like that i know that was insane it's, so it's I, I it's crazy when you hear these things from the botched doctors and what's actually going on and this just again you have to wait for things to heal this is plastic surgery you're under the knife yeah they're taking different pieces of your body for this surgery alone the botch surgery they have to take tissue from the back of her ear they have to take tissue from her rib but that's intense stuff yeah you have to be committed um but overall she wakes up from surgery what were your thoughts about her before and after this was a great surgery like when i saw the before and after i was like wow they did a really good job because i like last week we weren't really too impressed with a few of the Mm -hmm. i don't i think there's been a couple of um episodes this season that i've just been like oh it's okay but hers it looks like beautiful like she was aligned right she had that lump gone she it was she was like a whole new woman i was extremely happy seeing that she just wanted to completely forget about her past and now i feel like she really can't yeah, me too. As you're saying, she meant she even says the nose is smooth, it's stable, it's straight. I mean, it's symmetric. It's it's all you could ever hope for. Yeah. So I really wish her the best, and uh, 
hope that she's going to keep her head high because now she had a whole new nose. Yeah, she definitely <laughs> deserved it. She does it deserve it. And um, again, we always try to learn from these patients. And if you at home or if you know anyone that's suffering from any, from any uh, domestic abuse, please make sure there's so many people you can reach out to. There's so many hotlines. Uh, just quick Google. Uh, it's very important. We don't let's not find ourselves with another Ellen case because uh, yeah. this was such a sad story and I would hate to hear this happen again. Uh, and unfortunately it does. Um, but on happier no- notes, there's there's fortunate things that happen here within yeah. the network and I want you to tell us a little bit more about <laughs> this. Let's change tones. Yeah, of course. So guys, um, we just wanted to thank you guys for making us the ESPN of TV talk. For us to continue to grow, we would we could like we would use your we would like to have your help. <laughs> Make sure you sc- subscribe on YouTube, give us a rating on iTunes, and leave us a comment. Being a part of Afterbuzz means so much to us. We love being here. Juliet loves being here and we just thank you guys for all of the support and doing what we love yes thank you so much guys oh, i think guys thank I you tyra like, yeah, and thank you course. guys no no, no. i won't. thank you to everyone <laughs> uh, thank you for de- delivering that lovely message and people again at home we we'd love to see, see your comments uh in the live chat and then com in the comment section on youtube itunes a whole ordeal it, it means a great deal to us so thank you our final patient of the night is Gabby. She's a former Marine, and she had she had a childhood surgery that resulted in a bad bad boob job. <laughs> oh, this was something. It was something. How can you live with knowing that uh, a job that was done when you were what two months old has will completely will has completely affected your entire life? Like right. that, her. It, her situation was also very tough too because it was literally nothing she can do about it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she she had a cyst uh, that they had to get on, it was under her armpit that they had to get rid of. Mm-hmm. And I really, I mean, it's really surgery in general. It just kind of makes me cringe, but it makes me really sad when you hear about infant surgery. Exactly. And then to know that at such a young age, the doctor who did the surgery messed up the development of her boob because what did they say they took out um, breast tissue or something while they were taking out the tumor they kind of took out other things that affected the development of it so I mean that sucked too it's like she didn't even have a chance to at least make mistakes with getting implants or destroy her body on her own it was destroyed before she could even have a say so exactly I mean this uh, made her breast not completely develop as you were saying and so she decided okay let me go into surgery she was 21 and she wanted breast augmentation however as soon as she woke up from surgery she says when I was out of surgery I felt like I was butchered it was devastating butchered that's even worse than botch. Yeah. Butcher. That's like Frankenstein. <laughs> I mean, but when you think about it, yeah, like she said, when I guess like after the surgery, she was literally like pinned together. Isn't Frankenstein kind of like all stitched up? Yes, he is. That was a great analogy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, not for her case, but it made sense. But yeah, um, it was it was a very sad thing. And I think what was she saying when she, her junior year of high school, um, when she did begin to develop, they started developing uneven. So it was like she was that's that caused a lot of insecurities in high school. Like, yeah, yeah. gym class, you know, you're like covering up because people would be like, what's wrong with her? I don't know. Exactly. I mean, that was a huge issue with her with symmetry in general, with her breasts and also her nipples. We have one nipple that's completely on the other side. Mm-hmm. And what I thought was interesting is that the doctors were like, OK, so what's your concern? What's your priority? in terms of getting the surgery done the aesthetic that you like and she she didn't really have high hopes for that nipple yeah she wanted it done but really didn't have that many high hopes so uh we're i was kind of astonished by that because i feel that i would have that was one of the first things i would have asked for i think i would have prioritized the nipple versus the, the boob shape what about you really i would have prioritized the boob shape because it's not like your nipple well i mean i guess if you want to wear a bikini or something like that but there's also different kind of bikinis i guess that you could purchase um but i think i would like i was saying i would care more about the shape so i can like wear different kind of tops or things like that like no one's going to see my nipples be outside of my spouse or whoever and she's married so clearly like that's whatever yeah that's true that is a good point uh speaking of her husband what did you think of him I thought he was great. He was so supportive. Like, 
I mean, he married her before she even got this done, so you can tell he genuinely loves her for her. I thought it was, he was amazing. He was great. What I love to see in these kind of show, I mean, these kind of episodes. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I love seeing that as yeah. well. So the supporting spouse who's mm-hmm. been there through the whole journey and who loves you no matter where, which direction your nipple right. is toward. <laughs> this was like a breath of fresh air after last week's episode when we had people who like their husband or fiance, boyfriend, whatever, encourage them to get it because of their ex-wife. It was, yeah. Exactly. So this was great. <laughs> and even hearing stories like Ellen's stories, the fact that there's other couples out there that are healthy, people are in healthy, happy relationships. Those do exist. So yeah, <laughs> good to see. Uh, she uh, goes into surgery. What did we think about the whole operation table, How the actual surgery, how that kind of all went? I thought this one was interesting because they were saying it went it went so well that um, Dr. Dubrow was thinking back, like, did I miss something? Did I mess up? <laughs> like, I thought that was really interesting that I, I think she had the most smoothest surgery throughout this whole season, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it seems so. It was like kind of in and out type situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny how, you know, doctors are like, did I miss something? It's It kind of made me smile where it wasn't really a lack of confidence, but you know how sometimes you're just like, wait, that was too easy. It was yeah. like, they're such perfectionists and they're used to such high risk that it's it's funny when things kind of go their way that it's it seems unsettling. Yeah, but I don't know. Then that, I guess that makes me think back on her surgery when she was a kid though. Like, so maybe it wasn't as that bad, but I mean, like she said, throughout the years, well, JK, never mind. Um, after, before she went to the army, she didn't really care too much about getting it fixed because she was in her uniform all the time. But I don't know. I thought it was strange that it was so simple to fix when it seemed like such a bad situation. Right, right. Um, she she seemed pretty happy with the results. What did you think of the before and after? Um, I thought they were good. I mean, she was in a nice, like, v-cut dress ready to show off (laughs) i think it was it was great yeah i think so too i mean in in the picture in picture it's you could definitely see some scarring and they're not with for lack of a better term perfect breasts i mean what are perfect breasts but you know what Mm -hmm. i mean they weren't super symmetric i mean they're they're definitely an upgrade and as you're saying with the reveal and the whole dress i think they were perfect for her frame perfect for her I think this was a win. What do you think? I think so, too. Who was your favorite uh, character this episode? Um, I would have to Patience. say... Patience. Sorry, I always yeah. say character. <laughs> patience. Fine. These are patience. <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> I would have to say Ellen. I really... I mean, she had a tough journey, a tough background, and to see her be able to get exactly what she wanted and now is able to move on and have a better life and forget about her past was beautiful to me. And I always, I, that's what I like about this show, that they can they can not only fix your face or whatever, but change your life. Um, and I think this would be a very good next step of her continuous journey of life now that she's putting the past behind. Yeah, very well said, Tyra. Thank, <laughs> Thank you for that. Man. What an episode, guys. What an episode. What about you? Who's your favorite favorite? Oh, my favorite? Um, I think Carmen, because I feel despite, you know, everything oh, yeah. she's been through, she she remains positive and she mm-hmm. keeps a smile on her face and, you know, is thankful for every day that she's still on this earth because she, you know, she was very close to dying in those accidents. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, and like I mean, when in doubt, Photoshop is real. She can still model and just fix up her nose a little bit. Exactly. Like, At the end of the day, there's so many pretty. Post. Yeah, <laughs> she's beautiful in her own way, and there's so many models out there that all kind of look the same. This gives her her signature look, her signature brand. I was just gonna say that now it's it doesn't matter. It's not like this perfect thing that you have to be. They like people who have I don't know skin disorders or things like that so she needs to just own it now she's alive she survived all of these accidents just own it exactly all about body positivity I mean what makes you different and usually what you sometimes are afraid of is actually what makes you you know it's a good thing to be unique yeah own it at home everybody own it I love when we learn from botch you see (laughs) I I think sometimes people think this show is very um, maybe a little superficial because it deals with aesthetics, but mm-hmm. they're, I like how they're able to give so many layers to all yeah, these people. Yeah, it's really a beautiful backstory behind it when you have those people who genuinely just want a change in their life. 
Exactly, exactly. I think that kind of wraps up our breakdown of this episode. Uh, it was season five, episode 13, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Episode 13. This has been quite a season. We still have a few more weeks left, but not that, that many. Mm -hmm. So we're coming to a close in quite soon. Uh, but before we head out of here, we have some very quick news and gossip we would like to discuss with you guys of just, you know, kind of like news that's going on in terms of plastic surgery world mm -hmm. that's going on. Uh, just within the botched characters um so we reported a few weeks back that the botched characters sat down with page six to discuss various things within you know their job their fields and this week the page six uh, revealed another article and another clip from that interview where they discussed their experience living as reality stars being both doctors and reality stars and how those affect those two mm -hmm. so i want to ask before i reveal do you think that they both really enjoy it do you think one's more reluctant do you think one likes the cameras more than the other just from seeing the show from seeing the show they don't give me the vibe that they want to be celebrities or they want you know that kind of fame i i think they're they're just doctors who love to do what they do and they just so happen to have a tv show so i could see why if i didn't see the video or the read up look up the article but i could see why if they were to say they prefer being like not in the spotlight or didn't care about the yeah. reality aspect because it's just like they're just like doctors they just have fun with it like i don't you don't really see them being all flashy or all on the scene and things like that true true so from this interview we actually have dr nassif who reveals that he he it was his own word says I'm, I'm a little bit meaner about it meaning that when he it's a little bit shorter with patients because sometimes patients will come to him and will be like oh i know this and this about you because well you're on tv mm -hmm. and he's very he likes keeping the personal and the business separate as he was mentioning mm -hmm. so he's very like okay now let's cut to the chase and let's talk about your medical issues and terry is kind of the opposite and he doesn't necessarily feed off of it but he doesn't mind it he understands yeah. that his wife's on tv um they have a youtube very YouTube, uh, successful youtube channel where they mm -hmm. show their house and so he's saying that most people out there know about his house know about his wife know about his kids know about him from botched so it is what it is, and he kind of is uh, a little bit more happy and a little bit more open to the mm -hmm. whole experience. He calls it a icebreaker. He says it's kind of nice to have people who know about you, but right, yeah. right off the bat. Yeah, I don't know, but I, I guess I can see that with him. He does seem a little more... Be I feel like even on the show, you see him bring it out of Dr. Nassif a lot, too. So it's not surprising that he is more bubbly when it comes to things like that. And then who doesn't like to talk about themselves or who doesn't, you know, I think he probably, like, finds joy in it. Like, oh, my God, they know me. Cool. Now, like, I don't know, maybe they, they trust me now or... It's just cool to know that people respect you and want to come to you because they've seen your work on TV. Exactly. I think it's really neat when it comes to this show specifically as a doctor being able to look back on all the, you know, on some of your patients, some of the surgeries, because not everything is documented in this field. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty neat. Uh, but I think that kind of wraps up our episode for tonight. It's a great breakdown. Thank you for joining yeah. me, Tyra. I had a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> and guys, thank you for joining us. We'll be back here next week to finish off the season. I believe we have two, maybe three weeks left. But in the meantime, you can follow me on Instagram at Bonjour Juliette. And Tyra, where can they follow you? You guys can follow me on all social media platforms at underscore Tyra Fruit. Awesome. Tyra, wait, I forgot to ask you, what shows are you currently doing? Oh, I am currently, oh, today is the season final, season finale of Titan Games, so make sure you're tuned into that and that's it right now awesome. gotta sign up for some more that's exciting <laughs> very exciting i'm also on our shameless after show so make sure to check that out it's every sunday but it's also obviously all our shows are on demand and until next time we will see you next week bye guys bye. our founder kevin undergaro and me maria menounos would like to thank you for tuning in to after buzz tv Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.